for so long. We've been here. We've been trying. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Springboard Hangout. The Springboard Hangout, as you know, is your fun filled but very educative session that enables us to hang out, have fun, and ask critical questions that concern us in our lives. As you know, we started a series on personal and workplace productivity. The first session, we, looked, we did an overview about what is personal and workplace productivity. Then we followed it up last week with um, increasing your productivity. Today, we move from the, you know, the normal life and go into the jungle. So today we are looking at winning in the jungle. I'm sure you are curious as I am about what we'll be retreating. Don't go anywhere. It's, it's, it's going to be coming up very soon. Don't, just, just hang in there with me. Just hang in there with me. Today our guest has over 25 years experience as an HR in various fields of endeavor. She is one like no other, has an interesting story. And those of you who watch uh, Virtual University, you remember that a couple of weeks ago, he was interviewed by Albert on that one. So if you want to see more about her, go to that edition after, don't, don't go now, please stay, stay. Go to it, go and watch it after you finish this one and you'll see different things that she spoke during that one. But yes, we are here, and her name is Dr. Hazel um, Pobiwa Berad <laughs> Amwa. But I want you to tell us, what would you like to learn from Hazel? Send your message or your questions to the chat box in front of you. Additionally, tell us where you're watching us from so that we can give you a shout out. And don't forget to invite a friend because definitely today is going to be like no other one. It's going to be great. So hang in there. We're going for a break. When we return, we definitely are going into the jungle. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us.
let me also rent a car. I need a car in 15 minutes. Hi, I'm Jake, Jake Morris, and I travel globally. But when I'm in Ghana, Yorks Rent a Car is my reliable choice for safety and comfort on the road. Yorks Rent a Car provides comprehensive logistic services to mainly blue chip companies as well as individual clients. At the time, we needed a car rental service, and Yorks fitted in very well to our standards. Their services is top notch. Drivers are on time. It was beautiful to see them behind the wheels. And any time they pick up a guest, the guests were very, very happy. Already? Excellent. Yorks Rent a Car provides services and expertise that include meet and greet services at the airport, car rental, driver personal outsourcing, and vehicle detailing. Go, what, what's the problem? It's you. I told you. Yorks Rent a Car delivers world class service to its customers, having their highest safety and comfort in mind. So, watch you. Two of us are open for him. Yorks Rent a Car runs 24 7 operations where customers can make car reservations and inquiries of our services online and also call our hotline. Welcome back to the Springboard Hangout, where learning and fun have the same synonym, or they are, they are synonymous. Well, you know, I can say Rempo always gets me dancing. I mean, you should have been in the studios. I didn't want, I hope they didn't show, I, no, I didn't think they showed this. But, you know, it's, 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 it's fun. It's fun listening to Akase Rempo. So you're back in the studios, and we are getting ready for our jungle ride. Yeah. So today, we have in the studios Dr. Hazel Popiwa Bernard Amua, an author, certified insurer, Henley executive coach, a Henley certified executive coach, and a multiple winning seasoned HR professional. She has experience over different industries and geographies. Maybe she will give us a little glimpse about that when we start. So, well, she is an Aspen Fellow and a Fellow of the African Leadership Initiative, West Africa. She is privileged to be an inaugural Fellow among 100 Africans in the Pan-African Leadership Initiative. And by the way, um, I am among that, that thing. And actually, I was her cohort at, 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 at our sessions. So, I'm privileged to have, I mean, I work in good company. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Hazel is um, really interested in people development, continuous people development. And today we felt that there was nothing, no one we could bring into the into the into the, our studios. Not the jungle. Uh, is our studios a jungle or not? I'm not sure. But but to bring to bring here so that we can look at increased productivity or how we can increase our personal and um, um, workplace for professional productivity. By the way, today I'm talking about jungle, and because you can see where we stole our, uh, no, we didn't steal, we <laughs> borrowed our title from. The title of her new book, which she recently launched, is Winning in the Jungle. So we told her we took her uh, title. I, I'm sure she wouldn't hold us against us. But anyway, um, Hazel, we'd like to welcome you to the Springboard. Thank you. Hang out. Thank and it's a privilege hanging out because it's been something that I've been thinking about for many years. But today we have you in. Thank you for coming. You. Right. So let's go right in. Why do you or anyone for that, or would you or anyone for that matter describe it? What is a jungle? The jungle, I think, shows in its natural state the real nature of the world. Mm. You have a lot of complexity in the jungle. You have a lot of beauty in the jungle. You have a lot of danger mm. in the jungle. And that's how the world is. It's full of beauty. It's full of danger. It's full of complexity. In the jungle, you have to navigate your way through, overcome challenges, run for your life, <laughs> fight for your life, find ways of fending for your life to remain safe and secure on a constant basis, and that's our world today. So I describe the world as a jungle. Mm. Mm. I see. So then, if we are in the jungle, I mean, I know that humans really don't stay there, do we? Nah. When no. you think of the jungle, what comes into your mind is animals. animals. So what kind of animal are you? I'm an ant. <laughs> You're an ant? Okay, tell us about that. Um, so 
I describe myself as an ant, and it's important that we always think out about ourselves as what animal can like in ourselves too. Okay. To better understand ourselves and who we are and how we sort of interact with other animals okay. in the jungle. Okay. I call myself an ant, and I came to that realization in 2008. I was okay. going through a master's program in organizational development. Okay. And we went through an animal likeness game as part, part of our team sessions, ice breaking sessions, and thinking hard, I thought, hmm, I'm an ant. Ants work hard. Mm -hmm. I think by my stance, I work very hard. Ants do team playing. I love team playing. Ants communicate for survival, and I do that. If I'm broke, all my friends know I'm broke. If I have all my friends that I have. <laughs> if I need okay. a resource, <laughs> if I need a resource that I don't have in terms of talent profiling, a skill, I would ask. Mm -hmm. And ants communicate. If you ever see ants, I mean, on a path, in a cracked wall somewhere, they work very quickly, but they're communicating throughout. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And ants always prepare for a rainy day or prepare for the unexpected. So I'm very um, conscious of risk and uncertainties, and I try to prepare for them. So that's why I call myself an ant. An ant also because I know I'm very small, not in my physical size, but I know I'm very small in the bigger scheme of things. So... I have a lot to be mindful of in my environment, to be careful, to be conscious, and to know how to navigate in my space. That's why I think I am an aunt. Wonderful description of yourself. Wow. I have the privilege of being a member of a hiking club, the Chinku Hiking Club. And so on Saturdays, we take trips up um, around Obusumase, Ibri Obusumase area, through the jungle that is there. And one of the things we look out for from any, everybody on the trip are coming across ants. Mm -hmm. Especially those black, I don't, know, I don't know what kind of ants they are, those big ants. They, 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 if you don't know, and you, when they are going in a column and you step on them, Many a times, there's some, some of us who have been unfortunate by the grace of God, I haven't fallen back so yet, I pray I never do. To step on it, you may even have to strip because you have come across and stepped on a column of ants. Yes. So, yes, ants may be small, but they are dangerous as well. <laughs> yes. So, it's true. Um, we guard what we treasure very jealously. Okay. I'm a family woman, um, and if you touch my kids, I'm going to sting you. <laughs> Without apology. <laughs> if you touch my family member the wrong way, unless it's a point of correction or adding value, mm -hmm. but if you try to harass or, you know, attack, I would sting. And I will sting really hard. Sting bad. So you take off your clothes. Okay. Right. <laughs> so since we now understand, so you take off your clothes. <laughs> so since we now understand, you, you showed us how you, you understand yourself. Can you help us? How can... We, in our quest to be productive personally and in our workplaces, how can we understand ourselves? What are the key things that we must, we must be looking with? What kind of tools do we need? The modern world of work has psychometric tools, personality profiling tools, but let's just say that we don't have the luxury of those. Thank you. We don't. The best way to understand ourselves is mirroring. Mm -hmm. and asking for feedback from others that we interact with. Being conscious of the choice of words we use, how we behave, and looking at non-verbal body language or non-verbal cues from people. Now, you can argue that because of COVID, we have virtual ways of working, so how do you still you know, interpret um, non-verbal cues or body language, tone of voice, or response when it comes to how somebody sends an email or sends a message, or response to you by not even responding at all, i.e. ignoring you or using silence. So we understand ourselves by trying to, you know, make meaning out of the response that others give us. So if you communicate with somebody and then they smile or they laugh or they're happy, you would know. If they were upset, you would know. Yeah. If they were angry, you would know. Mm -hmm. If they are reflective, because you've said something or done, or done something, you would know. So how do you interpret all that to understand yourself? Yeah. 
So if comfort, I'm um, engaging with you and I laugh about a lot of things, we yeah. tease, we joke and everything. But if suddenly I say things that don't get a smile from you and you have a straight face or you don't even respond and walk away, I need to understand, oops, what have I done wrong? And mm -hmm. I have to take, first take responsibility yeah. and then try to dig deeper by engaging comfort again and checking. Oh, comfort, after church on Sunday, I realized I said something. I didn't get a reaction from you. Is everything okay? Yeah. So when I begin to engage you afterwards, mm -hmm. taking responsibility of that, if I didn't offend you, but it was something that was your own situation, your own context, so his gone, but there was just me. Something just struck me. Oh, I had just read something off my phone. You know, you give me a reason why I wasn't the cause of your responding yeah, like that. Yeah. But if it was me, because I've given the opportunity for feedback, mm -hmm. and especially because we have a good relationship, you could say to me that that word you used actually offended me mm -hmm. because I didn't think you'd say that to me or your behavior or, you know, you give me a reason for your response. Yeah. And that helps me to understand myself to realize, oh, okay, Comfort is not an aunt like I'm an aunt. Mm -hmm. Comfort is very different from me. Okay. And how I have behaved or interacted with comfort has made me uncomfortable. Okay. How do I readjust myself? Okay. So understanding self first comes from our immediate environment and those we interact with on a daily basis to just check impact of our words, our actions, and inactions or silence on them. So that's the first you know, um, tip I'll give on understanding okay. ourselves. Okay. Are there any other tips or we can, I mean, on how we can understand ourselves? So other tips would really be wherever we find ourselves. Mm -hmm. If you go to a place where you've never been before and mm -hmm. you've, you're in a group of quote-unquote strangers, how do you begin to build communication, begin to build relationships, and begin to have a certain level of comfort with people? There are five mm -hmm. levels, really. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not everybody you feel very comfortable with to say everything and anything about yourself but it takes time and a journey some people spontaneously you meet them within less than 10 minutes you can talk about your kids your dogs your pets what's upsetting you what you just heard on radio you know the news others you will be in the room with them for three hours four hours know them for weeks months and never have that level of conversation so our personality itself okay also gives us an opportunity to be able to know ourselves okay. introvertedness extrovertedness are the two common personality types i can share people who are very quiet and reserved and close and those who are very happy go lucky cheerful every day is christmas every day i'm eating ice cream very happy smiling all the time so if we understand the different people because of what they show to us yeah how we respond to them would be different imagine going to a room where you have two kinds of people one very loud and happy laughing automatically we are pushing them the tendency to have to laugh is higher than the other person with a straight face and very quiet. Even your tone and your whole composure <laughs> would be, you know, it would sort of respond yeah, to the other person. Yeah, so yeah. the awareness of who we are dealing with itself is very, very important. What I picked from you is what the big gurus talk about, emotional intelligence, am I right? Yes, and a little bit of understanding how interacting with the Correct. various... Correct. Um, okay, fantastic. Well, the thing is, Whilst you are speaking, people are giving us information from the, from the net. And Emmanuel is saying that I'm, I'm watching the Springboard Hangout live from Kasaland, Aka. Hey, Kaswa. I don't really know that, oh. Emmanuel. Kasaland. Kasaland, Aka, Kaswa. Wow. That, I mean, every day I learn, and this is my learning for, for today, <laughs> the Kasaland Day for Ghana. <laughs> and Amos is also joining us from Hinsan in um, Kumasi. A queer from Wa says, I really like the ant analogy. There are lots of lessons we can learn from the animal kingdom. Indeed, Emma, so a queer, that means that, I mean, when, we talk, when, when she started with the jungle, well, I didn't understand. No. The jungle is real, for real. <laughs> for real, pa. I see. Okay, so having brought that and, and, and um, looked at. Um, giving us that understand the, the, the need for us to understand ourselves and understand ourselves in relation to others so that those things will help us when you are relating to people so that you don't go to somebody who is an introvert and just be, just be shouting. You will get on the person's nerves. Ah, and if the person is your boss, <laughs> wahala for you, wahala for you. Yeah, so then... Um, can that 
help us or move us into um, understanding or, or um, understanding the jungle? Yes. So I talked about the fact that the jungle is a very complex place mm -hmm. with a variety of people. So once we are able to get these cues, the, the skill we use now is style switching. Style switching. You switch your style. Okay. So your extroverted self, happy, go lucky, every day is Christmas, versus that cool, chilled person who is in their corner, doesn't want to talk much, doesn't want to be bothered. You style switch from your happy, go lucky, today's Christmas style to responding to what is being mirrored to you, to be able to have communication, because you have to have a channel, a platform where your minds can meet for you to have rapport and be able to interact. Mm -hmm. So if you don't style switch, then you have a blockade because you're putting on two parallel, you know, um, schemes or two parallel channels. But once you're able to, you know, break through and then communicate in their language, body language, verbal language, mind language, there's a connection. And you can make sense out of that. And that helps you with your productivity because then there's team, mm -hmm. there's oneness, you can align and have conversations and avoid conflicts or mitigate yeah. or minimize impact of conflict because conflict arises out of interaction. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there is conflict, not because anything is really wrong, but our style of just communicating or how we are saying things or the choice of words we are using. Mm -hmm. So the intelligence to know that we are peculiar, we are different, and therefore have to be uh, conscious of that difference and respond to it in a way that brings positive outcomes is what I would endorse. So the jungle is very complex. The other thing about the jungle is the context, which is the environment. Okay. So things are changing around you, together with your other animals, where you now have a lot of rapport because of commonality and understanding, and you've overcome all your differences. How do you collectively and individually respond to the context, the change that you have? So what is your functional proficiency? What's your functional skill? What do you bring to the table as a team member when it comes to collective productivity? Mm. What's your contribution? We all have to play a part. And therefore, in the jungle that we now have um, a lot of collaboration for productivity, we all have to show up and contribute our quota to make sure that together we weather any storm. Mm. The jungle, as I've said, has a lot of uncertainties. There'll be rainy days, there'll be slippages, there'll be, you'll fall, you'll get eaten by bigger animals or be attacked by bigger animals. But how do we still collectively survive all of that? Because... I mean, life is not, is not um, a smooth ride. We mm. have, you know, the highs and lows, the high tides and the low tides. But collectively in the jungle, we can make some high gains. Um, so in, in, in connection with this, does engaging people play any role in this? Absolutely. Okay. So what we've said so far is the foundation for engagement. Yeah. Okay. So, um, emotional intelligence, I understand the impact of my words and my actions on the other person. Mm -hmm. I understand different personality types mm -hmm. or different animal profiling, mm -hmm. likings to human beings. Mm -hmm. I understand introvert, extrovert. Now, once we have that and we're able to collaborate and communicate, share information and, you know, reduce or eliminate conflict, mm -hmm. we now have the opportunity to excite people. It's important to excite before you engage because exciting brings your attention. You have somebody's attention when you excite them. You, you can you repeat that. You excite before you engage. Excite, excite before you engage. engage. Because when I excite you, I get your attention. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been able to excite you. We have eye contact. We're engaging, right? Yeah. So everything else, it's about the engagement. And what we're engaging for? We're engaging for alignment behind one purpose. Okay. Most of the times in corporate or in the, in the workplace, Productivity is linked to that big number we have to deliver on, whether it's a non-profit or profit organization. What is the target? What's the KPI? Mm -hmm. Until we engage together, we cannot achieve it. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> because we are not working in cells, we're working collectively with different parts of the pie to get that outcome. So if we don't engage and have a common understanding of where we're supposed to, supposed to go, mm -hmm. know what today's performance or today's situation is, and know the gap we have to close, where are we going? So that engagement comes after we have the emotional intelligence, we have alignment, we have excitement, then we engage. And the engagement is constant communication using values of respect and transparency. Okay. Complete communication, concise communication, timely communication, to just abreast and keep everybody updated on what's happening. 
A typical um, scenario which was very common in most institutions was last year during the onset of COVID. Yeah. Most um, purposeful institutions made it a point to communicate on a weekly basis, updates on COVID. Updates being new understanding of what COVID really is and what is not. So the myths and the truth about COVID and how to contract COVID, how to take care of yourself when you have COVID and, you know, the impact on business performance. So there was a constant communication. If you have an institution where you have not got your emotional intelligence right, you do have people aligning, you're not engaging, how can you communicate with them? Companies which were able to move to a virtual way of work, and I'm speaking in this context, scope of Ghana specifically, where prior to COVID, not a lot of companies had virtual ways of working, i.e. Right. working from home. Yeah. Those who were able to transition smoothly, it wasn't because of data or providing modems or setting up people at home. It was because they had a foundation okay. of exciting and engaging people. And during the various um, platforms that we either had people speak on or I was part of or, you know, had to learn from other leaders, HR people, business leaders, mm -hmm. it was a success in communicating and even reducing the risk of contamination to COVID because of engagement, because the platform was there. The key thing I am thinking about today is that engagement, communication, and effective communication. And also the thing that she talked about mirroring the person or the personality of, not, doesn't mean you're going to become the person. It means understanding who you're chatting with and trying to let the person know that you are in sync with that person. And if you do that, your personal and workplace productivity is guaranteed, not guaranteed, but um, you have a 25% chance of increasing your effectiveness at the workplace. Right, so um, we, but, um, I'm sorry, we, we have people on the, on the line and um, they are saying that today's Hangout is very special. I'm learning a lot. And this is Nashiru from Nima. And um, Josephine, Josephine says that not just communication, but effective communication. Thank you. Um, Hazel and Comfort. Josephine, thank you very much. We also want to say thank you. And you have some questions that have already come, come in for you, but we'll, we'll do that um, after our game changer break. And then Promise says, I am here so <laughs> Miss you were happy. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> I am here so Promise, I, I, I know as for you, I can count of you 100% of the time. Thank you for still reassuring me that you are here, so. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just look. Um, 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 let's just have one quick um, um, interaction before we run away. To um, I know this one. This one is this is on the personal side. Um, I I said I liked going for walks, so I go the I go we walk in the jungle. But we have someone here <laughs> who is an avid rider. I mean, she rides the bicycle and. Seriously, between you and I, I really, really admire her. Do you know why? I don't know how to ride a bike. For, I can't ride to save my life. Hazel, where did you get that interest from? And, 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 and how, where has it taken you? The interest um, was from childhood. Okay. So I, used to, I just used to admire the bicycle. Like, oh, and, no, admired. Yes, <laughs> and um, when my two older sisters who had bicycles are, are, are good at bicycles, I would try to ride a bicycle. Bicycles were broken down, we couldn't fix them, we couldn't have bicycles. I mean, my parents used the resources they had then to go education, education, so we couldn't have luxury of bicycles. But I had amazing friends when I was a child who had bicycles, so they would come to my house with their bicycles and let me, you know, ride a little bit. So I've always loved cycling and you know, the bicycle. But I, I didn't own my bike. Even mm -hmm. when I started working, I could afford a bike. I never bought a bike. Then comes COVID. So my children had bicycles that they would ride sometimes. Mm -hmm. So when COVID came and the president announced the lockdown, I was petrified. I can imagine. I, I was petrified. And at the time I was walking. So I used to walk a lot. I've mm -hmm. done every a couple of times. And I used to walk 
with a 20 kg weighted, weighted vest, you know, and, you know, try to even start to do tummy exercise. I'm still trying to get my tummy down. <laughs> so I was petrified because with the lockdown, it meant that limited movement. Mm -hmm. And I had a phobia for losing the scale of using my limbs mm -hmm. because yes. of limited movement. So that was my phobia. Mm -hmm. And my kids' bikes, they hadn't used them for a long time. So I tried to ride one of them in the neighborhood. And I couldn't do more than five minutes. I couldn't pedal well because the bike was not serviced. It felt lousy. I couldn't. So, but I told myself, I'd like to do this thing. Prior, I'd seen people cycling. Mm -hmm. So I'd seen people in full gear, helmet, glasses, cycling pants, cycling shoes, cycling. And I've always admired people who commute to work on their bike. So um, in Ghana, you, you don't often see people see in suits in, in, uh, in the traffic coming to work. But you find people coming to work. And they're very, very strong if you look at their legs and they are you know they're they're very strong so i admire that so when there was a slight lift of the ban yeah i began thinking about doing this properly so i have a friend in the car and i called him i arranged myself a bike and started riding so five minutes was like yes i've ridden for five minutes <laughs> then i began to i downloaded an app on my phone which checks your kilometer your mileage so i'll be checking so i had my i had my phone hooked on my Phone, um, your, your, your bike. And then was always checking and making progress. And I thought it was exciting. Then one day I decided to just ride on the main street. No helmets, t-shirts, truck bottoms, trainers. And I had people give me thumbs up. But I was scared. Trucks flying beside you. Yes. Um, small cars, the Uber drivers flying beside you. Taxi drivers, truck drivers, name them. I had to just keep still and hold my skin. Not bend. <laughs> so after that experience, I realized if I was careful... I could go on the street. Okay. So I went on the streets, continued doing that little by little. And the interesting thing about cycling is, it's one sport that any good cyclist who sees another one trying to learn wants to help them. Wow. So oftentimes I get stopped by professional cyclists or those who've been cycling for the longest time. Oh, you need lights. Oh, you're not in the right gear. You need a helmet. Oh, this bike. Okay. Then they even try to adjust your seat for you. You know, so I had yeah. helpers. Oh. Had helpers telling me that get your lights on. This bike is not the best bike for your height. Your seating um, is too heavy for you. The size of the tires with your height. I learned so much over a short period from helpers mm. that I didn't even ask for any information from them. They saw volunteered. somebody trying to learn a sport. And so when I got my first gear, I would get thumbs up. My first helmet, a lot of people clapped for me because there was no I was going to wear a helmet. I said, that's the last I'm going to wear. They said, you're going to break your head when you fall. And they said to me, every cyclist falls, and I've fallen a few times. They said, look, when you sit with cyclists, you realize that falling is part of the game. You will fall. So if you fall without protection, you're going to hurt yourself, especially your head. So over the period of pursued this interest, mm. taking serious days, I went to Bosma and said, where you walk to? That was an experience that I cherish because I did that in the month of February. I told myself I'll do a brie and I'll do a kusumbo. So I give myself targets that by this time I should be able to ride X number of kilometers or over this period I should be able to do X number of kilometers. And with a focus, consistency, and discipline, and by the very grace of God, thank God for good health, I've achieved that. This one I wrote before I came to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going on a break. When we return, We'll continue this look in the jungle. How we can win in the jungle. Please don't go in. If I offered you a chance to be 25% better at your craft, guaranteed, would you take it? Duh, who wouldn't, right? So why do NBA players reject this opportunity every single game? In a heated match, a free throw is an uncontested point that could separate victory from defeat. In the last 30 years, the league free throw average stands around 70%. But back in the 70s, Rick Barry used to make 90% of his free throws. How did he do it? He shot underhand. Today, our game changer is outcome over optics. Barry's technique may have been odd, but it got results. So why didn't more players copy him? Because it didn't look cool. When NBA legend Wilt Chamberlain tried the underhand shot, he scored the only 100-point game in NBA history 
and had his best free throw shooting season ever. Then he stopped. Why? Because he felt, quote, silly, like a sissy. If you're shaking your head at Wilt's excuse, I understand. But we're guilty too. We often ignore effective habits because they aren't cool. For instance, research shows that prospects need to see a brand at least three times before they act, but we don't talk about our work because we don't want to be seen as pushy. My challenge to you is simple. Find your uncool advantage and own it. And if you're worried about looking lame, Rick Barry has some advice for you. They can't make fun of you if it works. This has been The Game Changer with Jojo Okren. Have a phenomenal week. Before I went on the break, Hazel was talking about um, her, some, some of understanding the jungle, but knowing yourself and understanding the jungle. And then she shared a very great insight about her life as a cyclist. But if you look at the game changer that we just looked at, I mean, that, that just rolled in. Um, how does that play into um, increasing your productivity, into, into winning in the jungle? Game changers winning have the same connotation to them. Yeah. Game changing and winning. So something has to stand out. Something has to be peculiar about you. So the, the issue is about looking at yourself um, stretching targets mm -hmm. and achieving them in a very unique way to stand out. I always tell people that even though we do teamwork, mm -hmm. there's an element of also standing out because at the end of the day, we have hierarchical organizations or hierarchical structures at work. So who gets the nose to move higher, for example? So even if we are collectively winning, something peculiar about you has to help you to stand out. Now, I don't say this in a way that suggests competitiveness or competition with a negative connotation where there is a lot of politics at work, sabotaging, backbiting, and not respecting corporate ethics. So you play the game safe by leveraging on the key attributes and skills that have to give you an advantage or that could give you an advantage. For example, discipline, mm. punctuality, mm. keeping to deadlines, collaboration, coaching others, mentoring others, being a team player, supporting others. These will make you stand out. Your communication skills. All right, how you even carry yourself about would make you stand up. Yeah, communication always makes you smile. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Using the right tools, showing yeah. up properly, not giving excuses. These will make you stand out. So even if you have company values that are, you know, taught and are encouraged in the company, what is your unique selling proposition? What would somebody say about comfort that they wouldn't say about Hazel? Is it creativity? Is it agility? Is it problem finding? Mm. Is it you know, standing up and showing courage. Is it volunteering to do yeah. things which, yeah. you know, you can help out with? Is it always self-developing yourself to add value? And I use the word, or the phrase, self-developing yourself. Because oftentimes we wait for companies to train mm -hmm. us, expose us before we think we are developing we ourselves. Self-development by yourself mm -hmm. so i use those to put emphasis on your own space look at your strengths and development areas don't wait for someone to do it for you because companies have self-development platforms or self-development channels but yourself introspect spend your own resources time and money to develop yourself because it will be an advantage to you you can take that anywhere and apply it anywhere because it's your own property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you, we have um, Ajwa saying that. <laughs> Me too. I'm here. Some as you come for read my message. I, I have read it. Ajwa, th thank you so much for joining us. And then Anthony says, "Oh, Anthony, you're most welcome." Anthony says, "I've answered the question. You don't know what you want." But Anthony says that I'd like to join you for the walk one of these days. I think the, act, the time to act is now. I agree with you. I've been postponing my work for too long. Oh, Anthony, this one, the, the, the invitation is, is, is live. Please come quickly. And Anal says, Jojo's game changer messages are always on point. Thank you, Springboard. Thank you, too. Um, um, we have um, a question from Abigail. Doc, 
what's your opinion and having on the communication? What's your opinion about using WhatsApp for official communication? Brilliant question. I like that. Um, WhatsApp is a channel of communication. It's a channel. The most important element in there is the culture of the organization. Mm -hmm. Does the culture endorse the use of WhatsApp as a means of communicating? Mm -hmm. If the culture of the company encourages the use of WhatsApp, then by all means, why not? There are certain guidelines and um, policies around using social media for communicating. For example, if you are using a company phone and then you have or a company number for WhatsApp, careful what you put on your status. For example, if you are using um, WhatsApp as a platform for teams mm -hmm. to communicate, be careful what information you put on the platform. That shows respect to the other people on yeah. the platform. So the governance about the information to share and when to share it is key. Not all of us go to bed and put our phones on silent. If you are sending information to people at 2 a.m. in the morning for their phones to beep and for them not to be able to have continued sleep, then that's an invasion in people's privacy. For crying out loud, work hours, all things be called from 8 to 5. So when to send messages and what kind of messages on these platforms are important. But the first point is the company culture. Does the company culture en encourage use of WhatsApp? I worked in a company once where we did have WhatsApp platforms, but the company had um, a platform which was similar to Facebook and had the advantage of a similar platform to WhatsApp, and we were encouraged to use that one instead of WhatsApp. So we really had to migrate yeah. onto that platform because it was um, the company's culture to use that for everything WhatsApp can do. Mm. Could put pictures and send videos and all of that. Again, practice, policy, governance, respect, and the boundary management of WhatsApp is important. So WhatsApp can be used as a very powerful tool of communication. As a very powerful tool. But then you must remember when, and then you must also remember what you put on that platform. Yeah, because you, you, you are looking at. Okay, so we have a question from he, here. I, I, I can't see who's in there. But anyway, in that office, how do I connect with my colleagues and express myself without being overconfident or disrespectful? Pay attention to your colleagues, right? So again, temperaments. Temperaments are very important. People's personality profiles are very important. So if you are in a team where people seem very confident or have a similar temperament as you, you can you know, be all over the place and be yourself fully. When you have people who have a slightly um, different temperament, especially when they're not as um, vocal as you are, as bold as you are, you need to tone down your own style to be able to, you know, um, communicate with them. If we don't tone up or down, or to use my expression again, style switch, we lose our people. So style switch is very important. You first have to test who your peers or your colleagues are, sample them. And we have that intelligence as human beings, even animals have that. You can sense, you know, people and what makes them tick positively and what puts them off. And then you adjust yourself to those temperaments and then you you fit in. You can actually even create opportunities for that yeah. by, you know, do you know yourself kind of exercise, know yourself games. Okay, what are the three things that you don't like? What are the three things that you like? How do you expect people to reach? You can ask openly and then use that to inform yourself and your behavior and adjust accordingly. Right. So um, we've looked at we've looked at um, um, what the jungle is. We've understood um, how we must navigate ourselves in the jungle. In your opening comments, you talk about um, difficulties or challenges that are dangers. Tell us about the highs and the lows of the jungle. So let's talk about the highs being the good stuff, right? Or the okay. good things in the jungle. So when you have... <laughs> <laughs> celebrating the good things. Yeah. Right. So let's give a scenario of springboard. Springboard as a context. Yeah. We start off in January. Mm -hmm. We have targets for springboard in January. January to December, we have our targets. By end of quarter one, March, we've had some very positive 
you know, outcomes. We celebrate those high tides. We say hi, booyah. And then, you know, even probably pop champagne in the office, recognize the best contributor, you know, have fun, celebrate that. But in the celebration also, look at what we could have done even still better. Yeah. And then, you know, take care of those lessons. The same quarter one, one side of the business could suffer. Um, and then that's the low tide. So okay. how do we, in the low tide, still pick ourselves up, you know, and not remain flat and not remain closed mm. and still look for opportunities to rise again. Mm. It's important that in the low tide we look for what caused that low tide and how come we didn't see it. Okay. Because in your plan you have to be able to forecast and think ahead and do a risk analysis and be able to put in place mitigating actions so that when those risks become reality then you can already you have practically solved them. So if some unforeseen happens like the COVID yeah. which can cause a fall how do we sit back and think about rising in that fall? Either even sometimes even changing the business or changing how you do things. Um, it may take longer in some cases. It may take a shorter period in some cases. But the most important thing is not remaining in the low tide. Most important thing is don't remain in the low, low tide. And so if you don't want to remain in the low tide, how do we survive the jungle? Take action. Take action. Two words for that. Take action. Have a plan. Step by step. Go through it. You may fall again, but don't give up. The consistency of not giving up will break through into success. Mm. The moment we give up, we lose the opportunity of knowing what success looks like. Because, I mean, the, the jungle has uncertainty, and that's yeah. how the world is created. Mm. Even when you read the weather and you know it's going to rain tomorrow, Sometimes the rain may come today, or may come the day after, or may not even come at all. And then we'll, 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 we'll say, uh, Ghana Metro, they do. <laughs> <laughs> so bottom line is, that's why it's uncertain. That's how the world, the world is not predictable. So how to navigate uncertainty is when things happen and there's a crisis, rising up to the crisis and making sure that you take the lessons out of that so that in future you don't fall into the same crisis. I was speaking at a, on a program recently and I said that in the world of work, we've always been very, we've, taught, we've been taught to do a SWOT analysis and a PEST analysis. So SWOT strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Mm -hmm. PESTLES, political, checking your environment. What are the political changes, economic changes, social changes, technological changes, legal yeah. changes, and ecological changes. There was no dimension of health. Mm. If we had a health dimension, yeah. someone would possibly think about a pandemic. Yeah. Even if it wasn't a global pandemic. Yeah. We could think about what if Ebola, Ebola came again? Yeah. Or what if Ebola became worse than the first incident? Or what if we had something similar to Ebola? So we need to learn the lessons from being in low tide, you know, and exaggerate them so we can respond to them before they actually even materialize. I mean, you can't get 100% right, but you can get some out of nothing. I'm yet to see a company or a country that foresaw a health pandemic. I haven't seen that. Of this nature? I haven't seen that anywhere yet, or even a hundredth of this nature. No company, no country foresaw that there could be a pandemic that would wipe out lives the way it's done in this country. When we talk about political, then we talk yeah. about what if a political party or an election goes wrong? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Since the um, famous Ivorian president where there were two presidents in one country, yeah. some years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime you're talking about political dimension, you think of, oh, what if there are two presidents? Yeah, yeah. Even in Ghana, MPP and DC, what if um, one party one, refuses to give way? What happens? And this is a business context now because of that precedent. Yeah. And I'm sure now we would always think about the health pandemic that yeah. could have, yeah. you know, had yeah. this kind so of... So I have some management. questions for you. I have some questions for you. Quick, too, too quick because our time is almost up. Mm -hmm. um, Abinamwa from Sunyane says, uh, are there any materials I can read on developing my unique selling proposition? And then Anamensa says, uh, can you please educate me on the corporate culture you spoke about? How do I know my company's culture and align? So two questions. So let's start with the unique selling proposition, USP. So it's a marketing jargon that has become um, a corporate jargon or a personality jargon. There are lots of materials on the internet. I'd encourage you to read that. But the thing about taking stuff off the internet is 
you need to personalize them to your unique experience. So who are you? I think that was Abna, right? So yeah. Abna, who no, are you as a was, person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abna, who are you as a person? What are your strengths? What are your unique talents? What are your competencies? And then as you are looking at the USP from a marketing dimension, take your peculiar, you know, strengths and then use that to your advantage. The second one was understanding corporate culture, Ch right? And how do you know your, how do you understand, I mean, find out your company's culture and align? So most company cultures can be seen through um, company values. Mm -hmm. If you speak to those who've been there a year or two or more before, that's how we do it here type of behavior. Um, the values, the norms, the stereotypes, the learning from the failures in the company, you know, the procedures, the policies, the processes that gives you your culture, right? So that gives you insight about your corporate culture. The most important element of understanding your corporate culture is how you integrate into that culture. Mm. And what you do with that is assessing your own skill set and your own <laughs> values. Who are you? What are your values? from a family perspective, from a faith perspective, and for you as an individual, what are your values? And how do they align with that company? And I'll tell you what, if you have certain values of, for example, integrity, yeah. and you work in a company where bribery, corruption, thefts are not frowned upon, clearly no. there is a misfit. No, there is a misfit. Because some companies, I mean, they... they, they give bribes to yeah. get things that they pay, you know, bribes to get out of trouble. Yeah. It's common knowledge in this country and globally it's common practice that we all frown on, right? Yeah. That's why you have um, the That's country crazy. the country trying to um, improve how we fight against corruption. So these are real issues that are in the human institutions that we find ourselves. So that's corporate um, cultures and how you fit in or not fit in. Excellent. I mean, I always say that I don't, we have to do something about this time, but our time is unfortunately up. And I believe you, you join me to say that this has been a very, very insightful session. So Hazel, can you give us your closing comments for today? Closing comments, I think I'm becoming um, very synonymous with my closing comments on the shows I've been doing the whole year. Okay. I'll just say stand. Stand. I encourage everyone, especially given what we went through in 2020, to just stand. Mm. It's been a very turbulent experience, even if as a person you haven't directly lost anyone to COVID or you haven't been impacted by COVID, at mm. least the country that we find ourselves in, the world we find ourselves in, our society, we've been traumatized mm. by COVID. And if not for anything, wearing a mask every day is not fun. But stand, be consistent. Stand on your rock. Keep going when you fall. Rise. Never stay on the ground. Keep rising. Keep standing. And definitely, you will always be a winner. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And listeners and viewers, you've been told very well. Let's stand. Let's stand by, by understanding ourselves. Let's stand the world we operate in. Let's stand by and, um, ensuring that we know how to survive in the highs and lows of our lives, and most importantly, let's stand. You can see me having here Hazel's book, and Hazel has been generous enough to give three of you copies. I had to buy mine, you have been giving to me free. You know? <laughs> Therefore, the first person, the first three people who type in the chat, Thank you, Hazel. We'll get a copy of this book. So write away, type there. And if you are the first three, you have three copies. We'll arrange to get it to you. And thank you for watching with us. And of course, so that brings us to the end of today's conversation. We hanged out with Dr. Hazel Barad Amoa. She is a certified executive coach as well as an HR practitioner with over 25 years experience it has been a pleasure coming your way always and i would like to encourage you this sunday at 5 p.m please put on the tv and watch etv you'll find a repeat of this program at 7 p.m just take your that's the i always call it the ice cream of the night 
go to Joy FM at 7 p.m. and you have a privilege of, of hanging of watching Albert Okran on this virtual university. If you don't get enough of that, repeat it on Joy Prime on Monday at 5 p.m. I would like to say thank you to my phenomenal technical crew and I'll say thank you. God bless you. I don't know what to tell you, but this week promises to be so exciting and therefore I say have a very, very enjoyable week. God bless you and you are always the best. Good night.